Our aim is to improve the amount and quality of evidence about how children use the internet and mobile technologies and what risks and opportunities this brings. And it's vital to collect data on children's activities online to inform policy and practice that can fulfil children's rights. Now we're working as part of the Global Kids Online Research Toolkit to ensure that the findings reach those who can take decisions in children's interests. On the website you'll find our impact tools. This includes Getting Started, a document that explains our approach to impact and all the tools included. Most important is our impact planning and monitoring framework. We've also provided good practice examples from the different countries working within the network and a range of other resources for working with stakeholders, including policymakers and children themselves. We all know that the processes through which research turns into impact are complex and messy, and often made even more difficult by the fact that impact occurs long after the programme has ended. Nevertheless, within the Global Kids Online initiative, we think that we can track intermediate impacts or pathways to impact as we go along. And we've chosen to track these in five ways. The first is academic impact. Here we think it's important to actually record our research findings, our scientific findings, within peer-reviewed literature. This both contributes to the longer-term scientific body of knowledge and allows for others to, to learn from our work. The second area is conceptual impact. This is um, about actually working with NGOs, academics and other stakeholders to change their knowledge, understandings and attitudes about Global Kids Online or child rights in the digital age. The third area is capacity building impact. This occurs in three ways. The first is at individual, the second is at organisational and the third is at systemic levels. And here, it's about building confidence and capacity to both generate, to communicate and to use research findings for tangible changes, whether it be through teaching practices, through evidence-informed advocacy or other, other practices. The fourth area is collective impact. Here we capitalise upon the added value of networks and partnerships and the ability to develop joint commitments and common agendas, both within the countries where we work and also across different countries. And finally, the fifth area is instrumental impact. Here, we aim to capture behaviour, uh, policy and practice changes, both within the countries where we work, but also across the international system. We also have eight key principles that underpin our work. These include aiming for contribution rather than attribution, planning for impact from the outset, learning from failure as well as success, and many other principles. We hope you find these tools of use and we welcome any feedback that you can give. Thank you.